Hi guys, my name is Tom Antos and today I'm going to do a lighting tutorial inspired by Film Noir. Uh, we, we have Caroline here and uh, she's going to be our model for the day. So uh, this lighting tutorial is aimed at both uh, in beginner cinematographers and, and professionals alike. Um, you know, first thing I, I always do is when I start off is I kind of try to pick the most interesting angle. Now, if you're working in a film, you, you might be, you know, that might be based on the storyboards you're doing. But even then, you know, a lot of times storyboards don't account for, like I said, the limitations of the location. So you're still going to have to go around and, and sort of test your angles. Back in the day when film cameras were really heavy, you had to really rely on, on a director's viewfinder. What I love doing now is, you know, especially when working with these small you know, DSLR or DSLM cameras, uh, is just grabbing the camera itself and just you know moving around because it's like I said the camera is small uh, light and and it's easy to do that uh, and then I can see directly in the camera what the shot is going to look like and, and really what I'm trying to get here is just sort of a medium shot of this girl on the couch and she's going to turn uh, to to the camera and, and give us this look and this angle you know right away kind of catches my eye uh, I just like sort of the composition of that couch in the back and the and then that, that armrest of the couch here in the foreground slightly out of focus. Uh, also, you gotta keep in mind that I'm framing this for like a wide aspect ratio, sort of an anamorphic film look. Uh, so we, we're not really gonna see the, the very top or, or bottom of the frame. Uh, so, you know, next thing I do once I sort of find my angle is sort of trying to look at the frame and figure out what things I don't like in, in there. Uh, so right away that foosball table in the back uh, has to go and also those, those two big posters there in the back. Um, and then the next thing I do is, is sort of, you know, make sure I go over with my talent uh, about, you know, with regards to the, the wardrobe. Now, if you're working in a big movie, you know, uh, production, you're usually going to have a makeup department, you know, a costume department. So you'll discuss those things with, with, with them and, you know, obviously with the director. And you pick things that sort of will look nice, you know, composition and color wise and all that stuff uh, within the shot or, or for that particular scene. So uh, as you can see, you know, uh, I had Caroline put on some more jewelry to kind of add a bit more of the sparkle. And then, uh, and also we gave her this, uh, you know, champagne glass uh, she's going to be holding, which, which should catch the light really nicely. And on also another thing you'll notice is, you know, the posters and the foosball table are gone in the background. Now, the first light I end up using is this uh, cheap 500 watt uh, work lamp, basically, you can get at your local hardware store. As you know, as you start your career and you start working on bigger budget projects, you'll be able to then rent or buy, you know, professional movie lights. But at the beginning, I think there's, there should be no excuse in, you know, uh, basically you being able to get professional looking shots with using just pretty much any kind of available lighting that you have, you know, at the location or like these sort of a cheap, you know, uh, hardware lights. Uh, the big difference between using these sort of lights and, and the professional, you know, uh, movie lights is, is really just uh, the, the fact that uh, a the professional movie lights are, are safer to work with they uh, you know they, they have nice attachments for example to the light stands uh, they have a lot of safety features built in so you know you don't burn your hands and things like that versus you know the the work lamps as you can see they don't attach to, to light stands so uh, I have to use a clamp here to sort of pretty much clamp the light here to the top of an old light stand that I had so I placed that line you know sort of above Caroline's eye line and almost sort of you know full frontal kind of you know hitting her face so that it creates these very typical film noir uh, you know shadows under the nose slightly and then under the chin and you know th this is also what you what's referred to as the sort of a hollywood starlet kind of look and you know if you look at for example old photos of uh, you know um, melanie monroe or you know any of those like 50s 60s you know movie stars you'll you'll notice a lot of that that kind of lighting because it, it makes the, the face just, you know, adds that slight also shadow on the cheekbones, kind of makes the face look a little bit longer. It just basically looks more pleasing to the eye. And now the next thing I, I want to make sure I do is is I kind of control the, the spill of the light because I don't want the light to kind of go and, and light, you know, equally the whole room. So I just want it to sort of have a little spotlight concentrating on, on Caroline. So what I end up doing is just taking some, you know, regular, you know, kitchen uh, tin foil uh, they're using in your everyday baking uh, and um, and I just take that tin foil and I sort of wrap it around the light and I create sort of this little cone that's gonna sort of uh, you know tighten and sort of direct the light and this is almost similar to what you could do with for example when you're using professional movie lights and you have barn doors on them uh, it basically just stops the light from spilling you know around the edges uh, you know now it looks a lot more dramatic like I was saying we have that sort of a spotlight hitting Caroline and then, you know, just the, the close areas, you know, of the couch around her. 
but then the the back wall and then the, the in the foreground here the couch uh, kind of goes into into the shadows and then the next thing i want to do is create this sort of a venetian blind effect so the way i do that is is very simple I basically just take some tape, uh, you can use some gaffer's tape or, or even, you know, just some regular uh, duct tape that you can buy at your, at your hardware store. And, and you're just going to make these kind of long stripes, you know, uh, that kind of mimic the, the look of, of Venetian blinds. Now you could use, you know, actual blinds if you have them. It's just using tape, I think, is quicker and also allows you to really uh, adjust the size of the, of the blinds that you wanted. You know, you can make the gaps bigger or smaller. Uh, you can make the blinds themselves thicker by just doubling up the tape. Uh, now, the way to attach it is, uh, is, is, well, you can use different techniques. You see me here using a, a professional, uh, you know, a movie light stand or, or what's referred to a, as a C-stand. Um, that, you know, gives you sort of this, this arm, this extension arm that you can attach. And as you can see, I created sort of like this little frame. Uh, and then I'm actually attaching the tape to that. Now, it's not necessary. Uh, you know, you can, you can use pretty much anything you have. You know, uh, you can use hardware light stands, you know, uh, that usually come with these hardware lights. Uh, but here, for example, let me show you how you could you just use two regular light stands, uh, you know, to, to create the same effect. So you just take the tape and, you know, just tape it to one light and the other. Now, big difference of having two separate light stands versus, for example, having everything, you know, attached to that, you know, nice sturdy C stand is that if you want to move these now around or adjust the height, it's just, you know, not as easy because you got to be careful because you have two separate objects versus, you know, with a C stand, that's the nice thing is you grab one stand and your whole Venetian blind effect uh, uh, moves around with you. Uh, so I, I put our, you know, do-it-yourself Venetian blinds uh, basically in front of the light, uh, slightly, you know, like basically in between Caroline and, and the light. Uh, and then next thing I do is I slowly kind of start moving it around uh, the, the you know the, the whole stand with with, with the blind effect uh, to kind of uh, adjust and position the shadows uh, exactly where I want them. And as you can see up here, there's a big shadow right in the middle of Caroline's face, which doesn't look nice. So I, I adjust it further, and kind of the effect that I'm going for is I want to have, like I said, I want to keep the shot kind of dramatic, but I want to have this little reveal, sort of a, a strip of light, sort of hitting Caroline's eyes. Uh, and, and you know her cheeks her, her nose there so kind of when she looks around and she looks into the camera we everything like I said is kind of in this in the shadows but we see her her eyes uh, very clearly and that's also going to be you know really bring attention to her eyes and as you can see you know this this in itself could already be a, a really cool looking shot you know once we add some color correction but the next step, uh, next step that I'm going to take is uh, is adding a little uh, hair light or kind of a backlight you could call it uh, to really create the sort of sharp contrast um, and, and also helps separate Caroline from the, from the back wall there. Uh, and, you know, it also just kind of looks more like what you would expect a sort of film noir to look like. Uh, plus that light is going to act as a little accent light, you know, hitting that, that uh, champagne glass that she has in her hand. Sort of creating a bit more of those kind of highlights that are reflecting. And, you know, here is our close to, to finished shot. This is how it looks. And... Um, I, kinda, I do a few different takes with Caroline, sort of have her try out if, if, you know, a few different motions, you know, things that she does. Here's sort of, you know, so you can see what, what I'm seeing in, the, in my monitor. Uh, you know, I'm adding the, the widescreen effect. Again, like I said, uh, we're not interested in the top or the bottom of the frame. Um, so here's my sort of the best takes that I, I think, you know, I like up here. And, and I also end up getting this close-up shot, which is, you know, again, this exact same camera settings, lens, everything. I just basically moving closer to, to Caroline. Uh, just so we have kind of two different takes that we can sort of cut in between. And now the, the next step is a, a color correction. So, you know, if you want to create sort of your typical film noir thing uh, look, it's pretty much is going to be, you know, a, a matter of turning your shot into a black and white version and then also adjusting the contrast. So you can do that very easily with an, any editing application. I'm using Adobe Premiere here. Uh, so I'm just going to go to Video Effects, uh, go to Color Correction. And you can just choose color balance, uh, HLS, which is hue, lightness, and saturation. You can just drag it onto your shot. And here we can just take the saturation, just drag it all the way down. And then the next thing we'll do is we will take uh, the levels. And uh, with the levels, you can again adjust it so that, you know, uh, you can click on this little icon here and you can adjust it so that uh, you're basically just going to crush the, the, the shadows and to turn them into complete darkness. So we'll do this by pulling here the left side. 
and you can sort of see a preview here in the window uh, and then do the same thing with the highlights just kind of pull them up and really kind of overexpose the highlights kind of increase the contrast and maybe brighten the shadows a little bit by moving this to the left and you know just click OK to see how it looks and right there you could see it's it's a decent you know sort of a film noir look uh, if you want to do some you know more kind of advanced uh, color correction you can use your other you know uh, color correction software that you prefer um, I, I prefer to work for example with Magic Bullet Colorista because it works right within my editing application but you know you can use uh, DaVinci or uh, you know Speedgrade for example and you can get the exact same results so for example here with this shot I'm gonna go to my video effects and go to Colorista apply it and kind of they're gonna do the same thing as we did before which is you know the saturation we're gonna drag it down and our primary pass um, then next thing we'll do is we'll take the shadows kind of crash it which is exactly the same thing we're doing with the uh, with our uh, you know levels uh, adjustment before then we take the primary kind of increase it now you know d make sure you don't overdo it so you don't fully just blow out these uh, highlights on her hair or for example you don't create these really ugly looking spots like on, on her on her uh, here cheeks uh, where the light is really strong because for example if I pull it really hard you start seeing you have these kind of really blown out areas so you got to be careful not to overdo it so just kind of pull it back just till it looks it looks a little bit more pleasing and then the shadows again are going to bring it up a little bit so it's not too dark maybe crush the black areas a bit more there uh, next thing I'll do is um, we can hide the primary pass and one effect that I like that Colorista allows you to do but that you can also do you know using other effects it has this sort of a softening filter now you know if you know anything about film noir or, or sort of just your you know kind of 60s you know 50s cinema a lot of times when you had the the, the you know female actresses the, the the DPs would put on a piece of silk on the lens to kind of soften the, the look and kind of create these little glowing uh, uh, areas in the image without making the shot look out of focus and, and it just makes your actresses you know look a little bit uh, you know nicer and you can create the same effect, like I said, just by literally putting a piece of, you know, stocking on your lens. Uh, or you, if you didn't do it, like, like I forgot to do it while filming, you can take the, the pop filter and you can sort of drag it in the negative. If you drag in a positive here, it's just going to increase the contrast just at the edges, which as you can see, it can look too harsh. But if you put it on, let's say, minus, even like minus 20, as you'll notice, it doesn't make the shot look out of focus it just kind of adds this sort of a slow you know like a like a light glowing effect here's again if i put it to zero you can see and then there is like a minus 20 the effect so as you can see it still retains the, the 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 sharpness it just adds a little glowing effect so that's one thing that i like and you know that right there is, is, a, is a nice looking shot uh, and now another thing you could also do is for example we apply colorista to another clip here um, we can, for example, do selective, uh, you know, saturation or desaturation in this case. So you can go here to primary HSL. So the first wheel is going to be your, your hue and, um, and saturation. And the other one is the hue and lightness. So all we're interested in is we're taking all the colors here and, you know, you can individually this way kind of target the, 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 the different colors and you can sort of adjust them. So you can adjust the hue of it, uh, brightness, all that stuff and saturation. So all we care about is, uh, just dragging all of these all the way down to, to the center, which decreases the saturation. And we're going to do it for all of it except the red channel, for example, to create this kind of a cool effect. So I'll just drag it. And drag it further. Right there, and as you'll notice now, we have this shot and it looks mainly black and white, except the kind of red areas like her lipstick uh, is you know re retain that color uh, and then we can you know do the same thing as, w as we did before so you can uh, darken the areas here the black areas we can bring up the the highlights uh, the shadows too maybe darken the, the shadows a bit more and as you can see already it's it's you know it's looking like a cool shot yeah, this is before, this is after. 
And as you can see, you know, it creates a pretty cool effect uh, that we can now just simply copy and paste to our uh, other clips. And uh, here's, uh, you know, the different results that we got. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy the, the, the final effect. And as you can see, cinematography is not just about, you know, just the lights or just the camera settings. It's, it's about everything, uh, you know, f all the way from pre-production, you know, worrying about costume sets, uh, then to the actual lighting, framing, uh, you know, positioning of your camera, you know, the kind of lens that you choose. Uh, uh, you know, paying all the little details, you know, of what's in your shot. Uh, and then also, you know, like I said, obviously shaping, controlling the light, but even afterwards doing the color correction can make a drastic effect on, on your shots. And, and, you know, if, if you watch the, the tutorials on my, on my website, you'll notice that I, I stress sort of over and over that it's, uh, you know, it's getting a nice looking shot is not just a matter of, of getting a, a nice or expensive camera. Uh, because literally it's the camera I think is, is what matters the least. I would say if you're looking at terms of equipment, I think the number one thing would be uh, probably the lights than the lenses. Uh, and you know cameras these days, it uh, doesn't matter whether you're using you know a big expensive you know uh, let's say red epic or if you're using a little you know the cheap DSLR, the, all of them have pretty nice looking you know image sensors that are also uh, allow you to, to create the sort of a shallow depth of field if you need it, uh, even though you'll, you'll notice for example on this shot, it's the depth of field does not make that much of a difference. And really, you know, what makes the shots look nice is, is less so much the equipment, but sort of how you use the equipment and, and, and the, all the little details that you pay attention to. So uh, the camera that I'm using is actually the Panasonic GH4, and I have a Rokinon 24 uh, millimeter cine lens on it. You know, and I have a you know, nice seven inch monitor. I even have this uh, cool new uh, follow focus, which is, you know, just operates using a remote. Now, again, you don't need, you know, anything that sort of built up, you know, or, or, or uh, complicated, you know, to get the same kind of an effect. So, uh, you know, like I said, the, the, the shot that we got so far was with this camera. And now just sort of to show you as a comparison, I'll get the exact same shot, but using the, the Canon T3i with no extras, nothing. Just the only thing is a, is a little shoulder pad just to, you know, minimize the, the shaking. And you can sort of see how, you know, the two cameras are obviously different because you have the two different image sensors but you can still get you know, a, a nice, pleasing, you know, uh, interesting looking image with both cameras. So uh, as you've seen, I've been working with these cheap hardware lights, uh, just sort of to show you, you know, that this is all you have access to, to, to working with. You, know, you, you can pr produce some nice cinematic images. But now I'll show you the exact same you know, lighting setup using uh, what you would consider these professional movie lights. These are actually uh, redheads. Uh, they're out with uh, around 1,000 watts of uh, electricity or, or power. Uh, that they draw and um, you know the big difference between these lights and that is you know aside from the price these ones are just safer uh, you know to work with quicker you know let's say to mount on, on a tripod or a light stand and easier to shape and, and control the light that's really the only thing so again if you know whichever one you can afford to get I would say if you can afford to get you know nice movie lights sure go for them but if you can't again you just stick to, you know for now to the to sort of cheap do-it-yourself sort of, you know, techniques using these, you know, uh, hardware lights. So here's that same effect now using these uh, expensive movie lights. Uh, and the shot looks different simply because the, the lights are stronger, for example, so they allow you a bit more exposure. At the same time, they, they draw more power. So that could be another negative thing. So as you guys can see, you know, you can get very similar results. And I think, you know, just as professional using uh, do-it-yourself techniques, you know, with uh, hardware lights or these expensive movie lights. It's really up to you and the budget and the creativity and the time that you have. Uh, anyways, if you guys want to see other tutorials that I have, lighting tutorials, editing tutorials, color grading, and, and a whole lot more, uh, then uh, make sure to visit me on my website at tomantosfilms.com. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.